then action hello everyone good evening good morning and good night i hope you're all doing well so today's video we are solving problems involving venn diagrams or solving problems with sets so i'm going to be going over solving problems with two venn diagrams or two sets and then uh going over problems with three sets or a three venn diagram so um when solving word problems with two venn diagrams it's very much the same process as the last video where we're plotting a Venn diagram. So we're working from the middle, so we're working from the intersection and we're blossoming outwards. Uh, there's going to be a wee bit of algebra involved. Um, and we're always dealing with the cardinal numbers usually. We're usually dealing with the cardinal numbers with problems like this. So I'll just read out the steps and then I'll do an example here. So when solving word problems using two set Venn diagrams, uh, we need to do the following information. So first we need to label all the information in the, in the question. So just kind of like understand what the question is asking. Read through the question fully first. Don't just jump in the first line and start plugging stuff in because things are going to change. And uh, step two, we're going to find the cardinal number for the members that are common to both sets. So i.e. we're going to find the cardinal number for the intersection. If it's given in the question, fab. If it's not, we are going to be labeling it X and we're going to be getting everything else in terms of X. And then finally, we're going to find the cardinal number for the members that remain in each set, so i.e. we're going to be finding the cardinal number of all the elements that are just only in A, finding the cardinal number of all the elements only in B, and then finally we're going to be finding all the elements, the remaining elements that are outside my Venn diagram. So first step, we need to find the intersection, right? So remember to work from the inside out, and then just a little point to know for the next question. So when we're dealing with minimum and maximum problems involving two sets, we draw a Venn diagram and we let the intersection equal x. So if the question ever asks us to get a minimum value for the union, we must maximise the value of the intersection and vice versa. So if we want to find the maximum value of the intersection, we minimise the value of the union. And if we want to get the maximum value my union could be, we must minimise the value of my intersection. So... Let's have a little looky here. So in a survey of shoppers leaving a shopping centre, 736 people said they brought, bought food in the shopping centre. 431 said they bought clothes in the shopping centre and 121 said they bought neither. So, so let's see. So 736 people, so let's label this first. So 736 people said they bought food. Fab, so I'm going to open my bracket here. 736 people bought food. How many people bought clothes? Well, it says here 431 said he bought clothes. So 431. Okay. So in shop, and 121 said they bought neither food nor clothes. Okay, so let's work from the center. Do I know my intersection here? Do I, have, do I have any information that gives me what my intersection is? Um, looking from this question, no, I don't. I don't have any information what my um, intersection is. So since I have no information what my intersection is, we're calling that X because it's my unknown. All right, and now we need to get everything else in terms of X. So let's get these little crescent moons. All right, so who are the people that only bought food? Well, that's going to be 736 people bought food. But within that 736 people, X amount of people bought clothes as well. So I'm just looking for the people who only bought food. So that's going to be 736 minus X. And it's going to be the same for over here because 431 said he bought food. But again, out of them 431 people, X amount of them also bought food. So it needs to be 431 minus X. Right? And then finally, did they give my information for the outside? Yes, they did. 121 said they bought neither food nor clothes. Don't know what they were in the mall for. Maybe just for a little browse. Right? So 121 then is going on the outside. So what is the smallest number of shoppers that could have taken part in this survey. So I'm looking for the smallest number of universal, <clears throat> sorry, the smallest number of shoppers that could take part in this survey. Well, so if I want to find the smallest number, I need to minimize my union. I, so I need to minimize the um, amount of people in my two sets here. So if I need to minimize that, I need to maximize my intersection. So I'm going to maximise my intersection. What's the maximum value my intersection can be? Well, my maximum value my intersection can be is going to be 431. Right? So that means everyone who bought clothes in the shopping centre also bought, bought food. This is a hypothet hypothetical situation that could have happened, yeah? So I'm going to say 
and 431 is going to be my x. So x is going to equal 431. So I'm just going to do a quick little sketch of the new Venn diagram. So a quick little sketch. Circle, circle, you, maybe a bit bigger than that. Circle, circle, zoom in. So it'll be 431 here. It's going to be a zero here. And then in my food only section, I'm going to have 736 minus 431, which is going to be 305. And I still have them 121 people that bought um, nothing. So what is the smallest number than a shopper? So I add all these numbers up. So I have 305 plus 431 plus 121. I'm going to have, so the card number of my union or the people who took the survey. It's going to be 305 plus 431 plus 121, which is going to equal 857. So that is going to be my ma my smallest value. The smallest amount of people who took part in the survey. Now this is a tricky question because this, this question kind of requires you to kind of think a little bit. Like this is kind of a more logic based one. This would be a bit of a more harder example than you would get in the exam. Um, but let's keep going anyway. So what's the part B says, what's the largest number of shoppers that could have taken part in the survey? So I need to now maximise my um union I need to maximize my union so if i want to maximize my union i need to minimize my intersection and what's the smallest value my x could be what's the smallest value my intersection could be well it could be zero so out of them 736 people none of them could have bought clothes and out of them 431 people none of them could have bought food so my minimum value so i need oh fab this always happens right we're always on a mono roll, right? So I need to get um my max um a union b. So you get my max a union b. So I need to min. So that happens at the min value of a intersection b. So x is going to equal zero. So I'm going to draw a little Venn diagram again. So if it's a zero in here, they have nothing in common. So therefore, 736 people um, bought food, 431, is it, 431? 431 bought clothes, and then 121 bought neither. So what is the maximum amount of people that have take, taken part in my survey? Well, 736, so my cardinal number here of the universal set is going to be 736 plus 0 plus 431 plus 121. So it'll be 736 plus 0 plus 431 plus 121, which is going to be equal to 1288. And that will be my solution for part B as well. So that was a tricky one. Um, and there's the solution. Yeah, so that was the thing for part B to get the maximum value for food union clothes must minimize the intersection. And that would be. That would be the hardest example you could get but a max and min problem. Right, so three Venn diagrams. These would be the ones that are most likely come up in your exam if you're sitting higher level. So the process for solving problems with three Venn diagrams is very similar to plotting them. Remember to work from the inside out. Right, so I have a big line of text here. So I have all this information. Don't just go smashing this information and willy all nilly. Willy, 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 Recklessly, right? Don't be doing it all recklessly. Go backwards, not backwards, but like go from the intersection out. So do I have a blank Venn diagram here? No, I don't. Oh, okay, guess I'll make one, right? So get my universal set there. Set one. Set two, could have done this before I recorded the video, but you know. There you go. Right. So, 70 teenagers respond to a survey. So, this is my universal set. And 70 people were part of the survey. Sorry, that's a bit out of the way. Um, so, 30 had travelled to France. So, I'm going to have a set of people who travelled to France. Uh, 26 people travelled to Spain. So, I'm going to have a set of people who went to Spain. And I find that I'm going to have um, a set of people who went to Italy. So, let's read this carefully now. So, 30 people have travelled to France. 
Now, if 30 people travel to France, that doesn't mean 30 people travel to France only. That just means 30 people have been to France. Just because you've been to France doesn't mean you haven't been to Spain or you haven't been to Italy. All right? So 26 have been to Spain again. And again, because 26 people went to Spain does not mean they haven't been to Italy or France. And then 28 people have been to Italy. So 12 people have traveled to both France and Spain. Now be careful, this is where they'll get you, right? 12 people have traveled to both France and Spain. It didn't say 12 people have only traveled to France and Spain. So out of them people, in the 12 people, some of them could have went to Italy. So I can't go all willy nilly and put 12 in here. Because, nope, because I don't know, right? Some of them people could have went to Italy. So let's read on and see if I have more information. So I need to look. Remember, we're from the inside out. I want to see if I can get my intersection first and work backwards. So eight people have travelled to both Spain and Italy. Okay, that doesn't help. While X have travelled to France and Italy only. Okay, so they give me some unknown value here. Four teenagers have travelled to all three countries. Fab. So four people have travelled to all three. So there's my intersection. Fab, now let's work on these three sections here. So, I'm going to work on this area here first. So, how many people have travelled to France and Spain only? So, remember, this region here is going to be all the people who travelled to France and Spain but haven't travelled to Italy. So, but if I read up here, um, 12 people have travelled to both France and Spain. So, 12 people have travelled to both France and Spain. And four of them people have been to Italy. So therefore, this section is going to be 12 minus 4. Which is going to be 8. So 8 people have travelled to France and Spain only. Um, 8 have travelled to both Spain and Italy. Again, out of them, 8 people who travelled to Spain and Italy. 4 have been to France as well, so four in the intersection. So this is gonna be eight minus four. So I have four people now who've been to Spain and Italy only. Yeah, so it's all coming together. Then I have here, while X amount, so while X have traveled to France and Italy only. So only, so if you can see that there. So while X have traveled to France and Italy only. So. X amount of people have travelled to France and Italy only. So that is going to be this section here. That's going to be my X. Right? That's going to be my X there. And then we used that information there. Right? So then let's see the last, li last line here. Twice of many have never travelled to any of these destinations as have travelled to France and Italy only. Well, so twice as many. So twice as many have traveled to neither of these destinations as traveled to France and Italy only. So France and Italy only is X. So that means two X or twice the amount of people have traveled to neither only, right? Okay, so Fab, um, let's get the only ring. So how many people have only traveled to France? Yeah, well, I'm gonna have. So 30 people have traveled to France, yeah? But eight of them have also been to Spain. Four of them have been to Spain and Italy. And then I have X amount who've been to Italy. So this whole circle here, this whole circle here is going to equal 30. This whole Venn diagram is going to equal 30. So how do I find the area of this little bit here? Well, it's going to be 30 minus 8 minus 4 minus X, which is going to be 18 minus X when simplified. So 18 minus X people have been to France. And I do the same for the other regions. So 26 people travel to Spain. Again, this entire circle here, this entire circle is going to equal 26. So what's the area of this little bit? Or what's the how many people are in this little bit here? Well, it's going to be 26 minus 8 minus 4 minus 4, which is going to be a number that's quite big. That it's going to be so obvious to me. 10. It's going to be 10. So 10 people have only travelled to Spain. And then finally let's get this information. How many people only travelled to Italy? Again to reiterate. Out of this entire circle here. 28 people. 
this also add up to 28. So then this little area here is going to be 28. Oh, sorry. It's going to be 28 minus 4 minus 4 minus x. Right? And then my answer is going to be 20 minus x. So 20 minus x people have been to Italy. So that's my Venn diagram done. So represent the above information on a Venn diagram. So part A, we did that. Ding, ding, ding. Right? So I just need to represent that information on a Venn diagram. It didn't say solve for X or anything. Find the number of people who travelled to France only. Right? So if I'm ever f finding a value of X on a problem with a Venn diagram, I'm going to be using the cardinal number of my universal set here. So what do I mean by that? Well... I know, so I need to come up with an equation for x. So I know the cardinal number, so the universal set, yeah? That's going to be equal to, so it's going to be everything in this Venn diagram added together. Right? And I'll highlight this x as well. So it's going to be 18 minus x plus 8 plus 4. Yeah? Uh, plus x plus 10 plus 4 plus 20. Minus x, and then finally, don't forget this 2x outside here. Plus 2x, I probably should have highlighted it there. Right, so what's the cardinal number? How many people took part in the survey? Well, it's going to be 70 people. And now let's simplify the, um, let's simplify the right-hand side. So I'm going to have 18 plus 8 plus 4. So gather my number and my algebra terms. So 18 plus... So it'll be 18 plus 8 plus 4 plus 10 plus 4. So 18 plus 8 plus 4 plus 10 plus 4 plus 20. It's going to be 64. And then find my x value. My x is going to be so minus x plus x, where they're going to cancel out. Um, minus x plus 2x is going to be just x. So I have 70 is equal to 64 plus x. I'm going to have 70 minus 64 is equal to x. So x is equal to 6. So 6 people um, so 6 people have been to so x is equal to 6. Okay, x is equal to 6. Am I done? No. Because I've come up with a term here. So I'm looking for what's asked me for here. Find the number of teenagers who travelled to France only. So they want me to find the uh, the cardinal number of this region here. Well, it's 18 minus x, and I know x is equal to 6 now. So a, so oh, sorry, the answer to part b is going to be 18 minus bracket 6, which is 12 people. So 12 people travelled to France only. 12 people have travelled to France only. Then let's look at part C. What's the probability that a teenager drawn at random from the group has been to at least two of these countries? So at least two. So the, I didn't go to two countries or three countries. So I'm going to add all these up and put it over 70. So it's going to be 4 plus 4 plus 8, which is 16. Then plus another 6 here, which is 22. So it's going to be 22 all over 70, which is equal to 11 over 35. And that'll be my final answer there. So that will be a hard example of a three Venn diagram. So I don't think I have another example on it. No, I do not. Right. So my advice for these, yeah. If you're not given your Venn diagram, make it nice and big. Make a nice big Venn diagram. Make sure you give yourself loads of space to um, write your information in. Two, work from the inside out, find out what your intersection is and then work from there, then go backwards. Um, make sure to tick off and highlight information you've used so you don't accidentally use it again. And don't just jump right into the question. Don't start writing in 30s and 20s and 60s and everything. Again, just middle outwards, we're sprouting out, right? Find the intersection, work from there, right? And then... That'll be it. Um, hope this was some help. Not my best work, I must admit. But I'm not making no, I'm not making another video on this. Maybe I will in the future. But um, yeah. Okay. Hope it kind of helped. It was two examples of it anyway. Um, hope this helped. Okay. Anyway, peace.